Hello again everyone, Saki here, and recently I got to the end of Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous, and I wanted to share my specific ending. Uh, your ending may vary depending on your decisions, and I will highlight what decisions I made to reach that uh, point at the end. And uh, as I said, it's the ending. Spoilers are incoming, so don't get mad at me if you're watching this and ha don't want to be spoiled. So let's get into the ending of Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous. As always, I had to do everything myself. <laughs> See, things are great. You're alive. The wound is healing. We all have wonderful lives ahead of us in the new world. Let us enjoy the moment. It's not every day one witnesses the end of a phenomenon that changed the lives of generations of mortals and demons. Life and death, destiny and great deeds, answers to mysteries, the search for one's true path. The mind can comprehend all of these. And then, such concepts can be written down as a sequence of formulas, a series of lines, a chain of thought. Still, a moment always comes when it is time to wrap up, to reach a conclusion, to put a period at the end of the last sentence. The impossible rift, the bleeding wound that had tormented all of Galarian for a hundred years, was finally healed. The life and soul of the one who once inflicted this wound upon the world became the slave. With the death of the witch Arilu Vorlesh, the world wound she had created vanished as well. The Fifth Crusade may not have lasted long, but in that short time Dresden became the commander's city, her bulwark, her citadel. Unsurprisingly, she remained the ruler of the city and the surrounding lands after the spectacular victory at Threshold. In your speech before your followers, you announced your decision. You won't leave your position or Dresden after the victory. Although the commander became the symbol of the Fifth Crusade, there were still those among the Crusaders who were dissatisfied with her decisions. Years later, their words served as a basis for many alternate versions of the history of the struggle against the world wound. Your achievements in the Crusade areas of leadership, logistics, and military were not especially impressive. With the conclusion of the war, Dresden, the heroic fortress of the Crusaders, began to wane in importance. The memories of the gruesome battles faded, the deeds of the brave were forgotten. A mere century later, Dresden had once again become just another northern garrison, and the legacy of the Fifth Crusade began to slip into obscurity. You achieved moderate success in all areas of the military campaign. Shortly after the war, Queen Galfrey abdicated the throne of Minda and departed Nerosian to spend the rest of her long life with her beloved, the one who had helped her see that there was more to life than duty. Galfrey took up residence in Dresden, but for long afterward envoys from Nerosian strove to persuade her to return. Their entreaties were always met with a polite but firm refusal. Quite a number of Mendavians wanted to see the commander of the Fifth Crusade inherit the throne. In your speech before your followers, you announced your decision. You won't leave your position or Dresden after the victory. The ward stones from the chain that once guarded the borders of Mendev were carefully disassembled one by one. The angels that had been trapped inside returned to heaven to heal their wounded spirits and prepare for new battles against evil. You freed the angels trapped inside the ward stones. The victory over the World Wound changed many things, not just on Galarian, but in the Midnight Isles as well. Nocticula spent many days pondering the words of a certain young and fearless prophet. Before long, the Lady in Shadow openly renounced her realm and named herself the Redeemer Queen. This revolt against her own demonic nature transformed Nocticula, severed her ties to the Abyss, and brought her to Elysium. Thereupon creating a realm named Midnight's Palette, the Redeemer Queen attained divine power and became the patroness of exiles. The now vacant throne was instantly seized by Shamira, the ardent dream. However, her power could not compare to the might of the Lady in Shadow. The Midnight Isles, which had become a tempting prize for many demons, were plunged into chaos. You and Ember managed to influence Nocticula. 
The demon lord Baphomet suffered a defeat. The world wound was closed and the convenient passage to Galarian was sealed along with it. Baphomet shifted his attention to the realms of the other demon lords. A cell of the Templars of the Ivory Labyrinth was soon discovered in Eleusinera. The demon lord Descari suffered a defeat. He bided his time, continuing to plot his invasion of Galarian and after that, of heaven itself. The cultists that remained on Galarian went mad one after another, tortured by the nightmarish dreams their lord sent to them. Now alone, Anebia left, quietly, unnoticed, leaving no notes or traces. No one ever saw her again. Erebeth lost her life in Is. The daughter of Jernah the priest and Melissa the fisherwoman demonstrated magical abilities from a young age, as well as a keen mind and a cold, cruel disposition. She had only gentle words for flora and fauna, but whenever a human hurt her, she would make use of her long, sharp nails. Remembering the prophecy of the three hags, Melissa realized that in the end, her daughter would have to decide whether to stay human or become a hag. Jernah's daughter received the blessing of the hag's coven. The Storyteller, as old as the tales he collected, continued his travels across Galarian and occasionally beyond. He knew that out there somewhere, there was one story he would never find, his own. You failed to find the Storyteller's lost memories. Once again, Sela heard the call of the open road. Even a valiant paladin can be prone to self-doubt, and after everything that had happened to her, Sela wanted to sort out her conflicting thoughts and emotions on her own. Sela traveled a long way with you, but still remained at a crossroads, not fully understanding her feelings and having failed to help everyone she wanted to. Once the war had ended, Camellia grew bored and irritable. Shortly afterward, on a moonless night, she vanished. That event was preceded by a futile attempt to drive a dagger into the former commander's heart. About a month later, an assassin by the name of Maria arrived in Verizia. She had few things in common with the missing woman, apart from a fondness for cutting the hearts out of her victims. You did not become particularly close with Camellia. After the death of Horgus, the Gorm estate fell into disrepair. Horgus' will was never found, and all of his fortune passed to Mindev's treasury. The name of the once proud Gorm family was quickly forgotten. A short time after the war against the world wound concluded, Land set off on a journey. He wanted to see the world, behold the sea with his own eyes, visit Absalom, have a look at how people in Tian Za lived, and so much more. Alas, a mongrel's time is short, and his plans were fated never to be realized. You failed to become Land's friend and never paid enough attention to his personal goals and problems. Windwag became the queen of the mongrels and in so doing, assumed her rightful place among her people. She gave her rugged brethren a place to settle, a patch of the untamed waste taken back from the demons. In time, those parts were named the Salt Land, in remembrance of the sweat and blood paid by the young nation at the dawn of its existence. Thanks to their firm and determined ruler, the Mongol race survived their first perilous years of trials and hardship to forge a great future for themselves. You managed to keep the Mongols under your control and let them stay among the ranks of your soldiers in Dresden. After the victory, Ember simply sat for a long time, staring at the tongues of flame dancing in her hands. Her new powers frightened her. The awestruck redeemed were ready to hang on her every word, and that frightened her even more. She left without saying goodbye to anyone, and continued her endless wayfaring along the roads of Galarian, helping the distressed and punishing evildoers. Many worshipped her as a saint, but she would always respond with, Please, I'm just an ordinary girl. Your joint adventures convinced Ember that sometimes being nice is not enough to bring goodness and light. Soon after the war, the tireless researcher of all things researchable embarked on a new journey. She had a sudden urge to know how much time it would take to visit every nation on Galarian. She never returned. No, she did not perish. She simply got carried away with another experiment and forgot to come back. You helped Nino follow her path to the end, but failed to become her friend along the way. After the victory, Socio returned home. Now a famed crusader hero, he humbly officiated at the Temple of Shalit, painted, grew sweet-smelling fruits, and made the best wine in the region. 
His former kindly smile returned less and less often. He avoided talking about the war, and when people asked about his brother's fate, he just curtly replied that Trevor had been killed by demons. You convince Sosil that his brother is a true hero. The Fifth Crusade had concluded, but the former paralictor Regal Derenge was plagued by doubts. Had his every step been truly faultless? He returned to Chillax and spent much time pensively wandering the cemetery where the members of his order were usually buried, and it was there that his bleaching, stricken body was eventually discovered. Rigo concluded you were fairly competent as a commander, and yet you failed to dispel all his doubts. After the war, Greybor went off on his personal conquest. He traveled to Lucianera and killed four candidates for the position of the head of the Assassin's Guild, whereupon he rightfully took the position himself and became a preeminent figure in the Midnight Isles. Under his leadership, the Guild prospered, and the denizens of many plains would shudder whenever they heard the innocent phrase, Sweet dreams. You helped Greybor to take over the Assassin's Guild of Alushanera. Arushale had changed her nature, completely ridding herself of evil, but she would not dare to live among mortals. She took up residence in a small house away from their settlement. Shortly afterward, rumors began to spread. Some said there was a kind sorceress living in the cottage, or perhaps a reclusive saint, and people would come to her asking for help. She never refused anyone, and in time, she earned their trust and friendship. And what of me, the writer of these words? The half-demon witch known as the architect of the world wound. My experiment ended in success. In the war between Galarian and the Abyss, I emerged the victor. It took a hundred years and a million deaths for me to bring back the one whose life had been so cruelly stolen away. And it cost one more death, my own, for her to keep on living. I have recounted the story of my life for you, Phrasma, Lady of Graves. Not only of my life, but of the Commander's also. I believe the tale of such an illustrious figure would pique even a goddess's curiosity. Now you know everything. I await your verdict, goddess. You wrought great evil while it stemmed from the evil that was done to you. Your actions far exceeded it. Your soul is dark, and there is only one place for you in the universe. Oh. I shall send you to the Abyss, plane of pain and fury, suffering and privation. That which you have done to others will now be done to you. So be it. So there you have it, everyone, my ending, and I want to talk about my thoughts on Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous in comparison to Pathfinder Kingmaker. So the story of Wrath of the Righteous didn't pull me in as much as Kingmaker. I liked the influence of the Fae more than the influence of the Abyss. Uh, as far as uh, story-wise goes, it felt like Wrath of the Righteous sort of forced you into these locations you got to a point where you couldn't leave, you couldn't um, do your own thing, and I'm coming from a Elder Scrolls and Fallout perspective. I'm used to just, hey, what are we going to do today? Let's just go this direction. But there are several times in Wrath of the Righteous where you can't go your own way, that you're shuttled into uh, the convenient storyline, which narratively it makes sense. If you want to drive those narrative points home, it may be a little jarring for some. As far as the companions go, uh, a nice wide variety of companions. Uh, I like some from Kingmaker, and I like some from Wrath of the Righteous. Um, Valerie, um, Amiri, and Knock Knock were my favorites in Kingmaker. And <laughs> I kind of wish Knock Knock was in this one. He was my favorite uh, NPC follower in Kingmaker by far. Uh, this one, I kept Sela in my party uh, the whole way. Having a uh, paladin who wasn't lawful stupid was nice. I really felt for uh, Sila. 
back at you, friend. So, are we going to crush some demons? It's time to show them the door once and for all. Uh, Camilla, <laughs> you love to hate her. I kept her in the party just to uh, have her abilities uh, and just to sort of see how it went. But God, evil to the core. And I still do not care about the cause for which we are fighting. I probably ought to have cast you off rather than lay my head on the chopping block alongside yours. But I've grown attached to you now. I don't like the idea of you perishing in this place. That is why I shall help you win. Don't thank me. Not here, not now. I simply felt that I ought to tell you the truth. Nothing more. It seems I have grown overly sentimental after all our travels. As far as Sociel, um, I didn't really need a cleric as much on this playthrough, so I didn't get a chance to uh, keep him in the party as much. I felt that others were a better fit for my party composition. I regret that Trevor did not live to see this battle, but that means that today I will be fighting for myself and for him, for everyone who did not live to see our victory. I kept Ember in my party quite a lot with those uh, witch hexes. Putting enemies to sleep was pretty fun. Going through and sleep, 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 sleep. Very few made their will saves. And so that made it uh, quite fun to run through. This is it. The last fortress. <laughs> it's been a long road from the river city to here. We walked and walked and walked along the road. And suddenly, there's no more road. Uh, I love Graybor. He was definitely worth the 12,000 gold. He had a dry sense of humor to him. Uh, enjoyed what he did. He knew he was an assassin and he didn't hide from it. Uh, I appreciated his business acumen. Seeing as our contract is coming to an end, Commander, let me just say that you are the most impressive client I've ever had the pleasure to work with. And a highly lucrative pleasure it's been, too. And I liked Regal. Uh, the... Hell Knight Gnome, uh, he was all about military bearing, military thoughtfulness. Everything had to be done to a military standard, and having him in the party allowed me to recruit some uh, characters for my crusade that were very powerful. I really liked having Regal with me. I suppose I am. Being happy is not in my nature. But for the first time in years, I feel something akin to that emotion. It would be interesting to analyze what I experience when I see the criminal Arilu Vorlesh defeated, the demons ousted, and the world wound closed at last. It promises to be an exceptional moment. Arushale, I enjoyed her story quite a bit, her redemption arc. There it is, the heart of the wound. The source of all the evil that has been wrought here over the last hundred years. It all began here. And we will end it here. If Arilu Vorlesh had never opened the world wound, I would never have ended up on Galarian. I would never have met Desna. Or you. I would never have embarked on the path of good. Ninio was annoying as all get out, but every good party needs a wizard, in my opinion. Uh, massive spells and good arcana checks by sh by far. Uh, hardly failed an arcana check with Ninio and the party. I am calculating the likelihood of your victory. Taking into consideration the fortifications of Threshold, the long period it has been under demon control, and Arilu Vorlesh, who is personally overseeing the defense, I would give the Crusaders a 30% chance of success at most. Of course, the presence of an illustrious scholar of Galarion in your ranks, meaning me, immediately increases your chances by 5%. Unfortunately, I didn't get to go back and put those masks uh, at that location. I would have, like I said, I was sort of thrust into uh, the ending thinking I had more time. But the assault on Threshold was the end-all be-all. I should have known. That was my mistake. Uh, if I play through again, I'm definitely going to... Uh, complete more of the companion quests uh, to sort of see those endings change and see uh, what all that ended up being. As far as Wolgif, uh, if you played and you're wondering where Wolgif was, um, there was a story arc spoiler that uh, his grandfather 
the the demon wanted to sort of imbue himself into Wolgif and say, hey, you're going to be the new embodiment of me. Uh, you're going to take over. And I basically said, sure, whatever. And Wolgif didn't like that. He he shook him away. We defeated his grandfather demon. And he said, how, how could you let me fall, chief? So long, chief. And out he went. Never saw him again. As far as Darien, couldn't stand him. Um, I did a little bit of the Darien quest line where we went to his old house and saw his childhood and the demon that basically lived in his head and saw through his eyes. Um, I didn't want that kind of juju in my party. So as soon as uh, Darian was like, hey, I can leave now, I said, please don't let the door hit you on the way out. Just go. Um, and I didn't kill Lan, obviously. Um, I, I felt for Lan. I know Lan was trying to do the best from his point of view. You know what's crazy? I never thought this moment would come so soon. It feels like only yesterday we were trying to bring a blazing Canabras under control and... Now we're standing on the cusp of our last battle. Threshold. This isn't how I imagined it. I thought I'd be running happily toward death and trying to do something particularly heroic so I could go out in style. But now... I'm thinking about how we have to win and go back to Dresden because there's so much work still to do there. Uh, but I liked Windowog and her skills. In my next playthrough, I'll probably keep land this time around. But L Windowog was a freaking machine gun by the end of the uh, by the end of the game, shooting six or seven times with that bow. High initiative, she could pop, 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 like at the start of combat and wipe out two or three in a surprise round before they even get going. So Windowog pull her weight. So this is where it all ends. When I first crossed paths with you in Neatholm, I never thought I'd end up in the very heart of the world wound. You certainly know how to enjoy yourself. I suppose now is the time to thank you for that. After everything we've gone through together, it's strange to think that I once planned to spend my whole life in those horrible catacombs under Crenabras. I know this won't sound much in the spirit of the Crusade, but uh, betraying Hosilla was the best decision of my life. So I was happy to see that her and Lan sort of had a... You could tell they didn't like each other, but that respect was kind of there by the end of it. And because Lan came so late into the uh, story, I wasn't able to do any of his uh, companion questline. But the companions in this game were pretty solid. There were some that you love to hate, some that were truly evil, some that were truly good. A good balance of companions, some memorable, some forgetful, but uh, really happy with the companion set. As far as the world map goes, I like the way Kingmaker did it a little bit better than the Crusade. I wasn't a fan of the might and magic sort of combat. Uh, once I got a handle on it, it became easier. I started to understand uh, what was going on. But if I'm not going for an achievement run, I'll probably just leave that on auto next time and not have to worry about uh, waiting. It, it feels like an artificial pad waiting for soldiers to be recruited. So you have enough strength to take the forts because the forts block your forward progress. I like the, the story beats of Kingmaker moving you to the next era or the next zone. Essentially, it is the same thing. Uh, with Wrath of the Righteous, if you have a strong enough army, you can brute force your way into new lands quicker than I think Kingmaker that was sort of paced. But one thing I did like about the Crusade was the the lack of, or the, the less focus on the events that you uh, chose between. Only four um, categories to choose from. You didn't have to worry about advisors. You didn't have 17 things that were stacked up because one advisor was busy for two months. I mean, that was, that was freaking nuts. Uh, Harem and Kingmaker, he was, he was my religious, uh, advisor and he would be on studying something for 60 months and that would stack up everything behind it. Nothing could get done. And I had 20 or 30 religious things to research and every one of them was two months. And that, maybe I did something wrong, uh, but I didn't enjoy that. I did like Wrath of the Righteous and there were a few 
things, the, um, the leadership, the military, the diplomacy, um, and there were, each one could do one, but there were less of them, if that made any sense. It was easier to sort of prioritize uh, building up your empire and taking towns. One thing I will say, it wasn't made clear that when you took those forts and they became that little um, four-way town piece, that little circle, I didn't know those were even towns that you could build on. Not until much, much later. Uh, I accidentally clicked on one and it's like, oh, manage. Okay, missed on that. Which then, that's when my crusade started really rolling. Uh, that I could build those reinforcement percentage buildings and build up my army much bigger which sort of pushed that story along. But for me, it's a definite buy, for sure. I don't regret buying it a bit. I had a great time with Wrath of the Righteous, and once I get done with Pillars of Eternity 2, I might come back to Wrath of the Righteous in my free time, uh, depending on what games are coming out, and I'll definitely play it a little bit different. I think the replay value is definitely there, and now that I have it, a, a, a good idea of what to do going forward starting a new game will be much easier the second time around with a brand new character brand new class brand new uh, mythic path and i like the mythic paths the the variety of perks you could pick for your mythic path i in initially went with the aeon uh distributing justice and you're guilty what crimes have you committed i can see right through you and Camilla straight up said, look, if you're going to be judging your friends, you're not going to have many friends left. And then the gold dragon uh, option appeared uh, for saving the dragon, I, I assume. I, I forget where uh, I saved the dragon at, but thankfully that path opened up and that seemed more uh, gameplay-wise better for me. Uh, as a character, I did have the option of becoming the, the walking swarm or whatever, but that seemed really evil. Um, my next playthrough, I might try the Trickster. Uh, there were a lot of paths that were closed off to me and a lot of options that required the Trickster path. So I'd be interested to see uh, what the Trickster path led to uh, as opposed to the Aeon because I didn't see really a benefit of being an Aeon. Um, so I would skip that. I don't know what the Angel path is like or the Demonic path, uh, but next time around, I might try to be the Trickster. Overall... Uh, Thoughts-wise, what could be improved in Pathfinder 3, if there is a Pathfinder 3? I hope so. Good job, Al Cat, for providing another awesome game, in my opinion. Uh, what would I like to see in Pathfinder 3? Uh, the amount of classes were amazing. Keep the followers uh, as interesting as they were this time around. I really enjoyed them. Uh, but the whole secondary game, I'm not a fan of. I really didn't like the kingdom micromanagement of Kingmaker. I didn't really like the crusade aspect of Wrath of the Righteous. My enjoyment came from going to place to place with my party, uh, uncovering secrets, all that good stuff, and opening the world. Um, maybe a bigger world if you didn't have to focus so much on, you know, this secondary gameplay shoveled in. You could in take that time to expand the world and make a bigger zone. Make it multinational, if you were. That would be really intriguing, traveling from place to place and having a much bigger world to move around with. But that's just my opinion. Some people would really like the uh, building gameplay and all that stuff. But that's just not for me. Uh, that's not why I play those type of games. Uh, if I wanted to play that, I might place Stellaris or something like that of uh, placing buildings down and getting uh, benefits out of it and all that good stuff. Uh, but, you know, if I could say one thing, it would be avoid the secondary uh, mini game in the middle of the traveling segments. But that's just my opinion. What kind of endings did you have? Let me know in the comments down below. If you wanted to see me do a run of Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous, let me know as well, and uh, we'll see what we can do. But that will do it for me. Like, share, and subscribe if you are so bold. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.